This is the death of the battleship Turbots. RAF Lancasters roar to the attack. And here is the 45,000 ton pride of the German Navy firing desperately at the air raiders. A six ton armor piercing blockbuster is on its way. The Turbots is mortally hit, but replies with everything, including 15 inch guns, in this climactic battle of Tromso Fjord in Norway. Another near hit. The RAF is scoring after two previous unsuccessful attempts from Scottish bases 1,200 miles away. Another blockbuster heads for the target. Perfect weather sweeps away the defensive smoke screen. And another hit is registered. These RAF pictures show the death agonies of the crippled monster. Months of preparation went into the assault. The RAF, in sinking the Turpits, turned in one of its greatest jobs. Old Man Winter has joined the Germans to slow our advance in northern Europe. The first snow, combined with mud, are two enemies that can slow down the best mechanized divisions. Farther to the south, at Konzen, Germans are blasted by our fire. A German gun position in a farmhouse is discovered by observers, and they don't live there anymore. A withering barrage drives out those still living. These are Signal Corps pictures. A church steeple is being used by the Germans as a spotting post for their guns, and our troops have no alternative but to shell it. Shot after shot finds its mark. With the Luftwaffe driven from the skies, anti-aircraft units have turned to field artillery fighting. Using their same guns, they help to rout the enemy from the Hurtgen forest. A barrage covers our advance. planes to shoot at, these men craved action, and they're getting here a plenty as they aid the infantry in pushing the Germans back. <music> California's usual pageantry opens the sixth war loan drive in Los Angeles as motion picture players and Californians join to depict embattled America in her pioneer days. The spirit that made our country great is recalled. During this, the greatest of all her struggles. The youth of Los Angeles does its part. And there is only one slogan in this city today. Buy bonds until victory is won. Why our men need your money is explained by Secretary Morgenthau. One indispensable source of encouragement to those men is the knowledge that we at home are backing them up with all we have. This is our endurance test as well as theirs. Our response to the sixth war loan drive will be the vindication to these men of their faith in us. Nazi tanks and troops patrol Copenhagen, capital of Denmark, occupied since 1940 when Germany attacked without a declaration of war. The peaceful Danes burned with resentment and sabotaged enemy headquarters and quizzling establishments at every opportunity. When the Nazis proclaimed a state of siege, the Danish Navy rebelled. Part of the fleet fled to Sweden and the rest was scuttled. As Danish defiance grew, the Nazis applied their usual brutal methods in an effort to enforce obedience. Beatings, killings, and imprisonment in concentration camps were the punishments inflicted on a brave people defending their rights. Murdered in the dark by the Gestapo, Kai Munk, a celebrated Danish priest, poet and dramatist, is buried along with other martyrs to the Danish cause. The graves are heaped with tributes from King Christian and his people. The king 
is a prisoner of the Nazis in his castle, but his loyal subjects display the flag from every house in honor of his 73rd birthday. One of the stern measures affected by the Nazis was to smash the plate glass windows in Copenhagen stores, glass almost impossible to replace. The stars and stripes, symbol of the allied promise of liberation, flies above scenes of the Danish program of sabotage. The Danes stage a general strike, tying up transportation and shutting down German war factories. But in spite of beatings, killings, curfews and starvation tactics, the Danes would not give in. It was the Nazis, finally, who had to bow to Danish courage. Still occupied by the enemy, Denmark bravely awaits the day of complete freedom. Fifty-six thousand fans have wedged themselves into the polo grounds to watch the professional giants tangle with the Green Bay Packers. Comp of the Packers heaves a bullseye to Hudson for a first down. Ball. Comp takes it again and heaves it, watch it now, to Livingston, who intercepts it from the Giants and makes it count. <laughs> Giants in possession, ball goes to Ward Cup and he goes for the long yardage, about 25 yards of it in one trip. <laughs> this time the ball goes to Pascal, he knifes through the same hole and picks up 15 more yards. These pros tackle for keeps. Petrillis dives through left tackle. Good thing his head is glued on. The Giants need this game to improve their standing. Ball goes down to first-year player Herber, who sends it along to Liebel, and the Giants win 24 to nothing. 